everyone. Welcome to the Community Classroom. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. And we're continuing our discussion related to the ancient roots of those from West Africa, uh, those who are claiming Moorish descent, and then by extension, of course, uh, many individuals in America. While many people tend to focus on phenotype, uh, and this amorphous idea of a race to trace ancestry and understand history. Uh, history is often best understood based upon artifacts. Now, artifacts sometimes uh, don't have veracity, but sometimes they do. So we're going to look at some cultural artifacts to see if we can see some connections between the ancient world and the more modern world. We're going to look at some artifacts from some cultural artifacts from Nigeria, and we're going to tie them back to uh, some dynamics in the ancient world. If this video appears on anything other than Dr. Tracy McCarthy, it is stolen and unauthorized. Many West Africans and many individuals identifying as Moor uh, trace their heritage in terms of narrative uh, to the East. And so what we're going to look at is a continuation of this look at uh, a connection between the roots of West Africa in particular, uh, the roots of individuals who identify as Moor and the roots of Asia. And in this case, we're going to be looking at this cap. And this cap is a cap that's worn by men in Nigeria. And uh, you can see on the screen the uh, various depictions of the hat. You will often see the men wearing the hat at more formal uh, situations. And so ceremonies, weddings, and things like that. What you can also see, however, based upon these ancient sculptures is that uh, this hat is not new. And so you can see with both uh, dynamics in terms of the patterns of the hats, the two hats, the ones at the top and the ones at the bottom, you can see that uh, there are ancient uh, manifestations going on here in uh, more modern times. And so let's just quickly look at some of the history of this hat and where it comes from and uh, some other connections between uh, Asia and West Africa related to this cultural artifact of the hat and also some other cultural artifacts that you see uh, and understand as being West African, but they also have some uh, Asian roots. As you can see, again, this is a very ancient hat. It's known as the Phrygian cap, also known as the Gaelic cap. And it is a soft cap that is uh, at the top, it bends forward or sometimes to the side a little bit there. And it was worn in ancient times. And you can see a variety of depictions uh, from ancient times. And you can see a little bit more of a modern depiction off to the uh, right at the bottom. And then you can also see um, popular culture usage of this hat. And it's interesting to talk about this hat in particular because previously there were lots of discussions related to cultural appropriation and uh, these debates, these discussions were going on between individuals who understood themselves as uh, African Americans and those who understood themselves as uh, Africans from the continent. And so there were all sorts of discussions that were going on just last year about cultural appropriation and uh, the wearing of things from one culture uh, by individuals in uh, another culture. And the hat became a big issue for some individuals. And so you can see that this hat actually traces back uh, past West Africa. And just as a quick reminder, when you see Gaelic, it's related to the Galts, Gaul. You'll see uh, Galia, Gaelic. Uh, and so you'll see a number of iterations and you can see these uh, up here also related to Galatians.
Now, this Fijian cap has a, a long history. And one part of that history is, is that it is a cap that was used to signify manumission in Asia Minor for individuals who had been enslaved. And so this would be a freedman's cap. And this cap was also adopted, a variation of it was adopted by those who were involved in the French Revolution. And for those who are not familiar with Phrygia, it is an ancient district in Turkey, and so it's related to Anatolia, so uh, for those who are familiar with that, and also related to the Hittite collapse. And so uh, this is a key uh, area in terms of history, and this again is what uh, this cap is related to, is this area known as Phrygia in Turkey. And as you can see here, Anatolia is rooted in the same word as Andalusia. And so uh, this is also known as Asia Minor. And you can see here the notation that because of its location at the point where the continents of Asia and Europe meet, Anatolia was from the beginnings of civilization, a crossroads for numerous people migrating or conquering from either continent. And for those who are unfamiliar with Andalusia, it is the area that was the stronghold of the Moors. And here we see another common thread running through Africa and Turkey, uh, West Africa, West African cultures, and Turkey specifically, we're talking about Nigeria and to another extent also Ghana. Uh, there is the use of the Ankara fabric in uh, cloth that you might get from Africa that represents, it's sort of emblematic of West African cloth. And actually that cloth comes from Turkey. And so you can again see this connection. That is, again, this is emblematic. And you can see that it's used for dashikis, also used for head wraps, also used for other articles of clothing. But when you see these articles of clothing, you automatically uh, attribute them to West Africa. But these articles of clothing are made from fabric that traces back to Asia. One thing to note related to the Phrygian cap is that it is also conflated with the Pileus cap. And so sometimes you'll see the Pileus cap as emblematic of emancipated uh, individuals, and sometimes you'll see it related to the Phrygian cap. And so with the, with the Pileus cap, however, there is a point at the top, and so it's really just a cone shape in terms of the shape of the hat. And because of that conflation, it's sometimes difficult to know exactly uh, the meaning behind wearing the cap. And so you might have the cap worn uh, and individuals might be wearing the Pileus cap and thinking they are wearing it to symbolize a Phrygian cap. And sometimes individuals might be wearing a Phrygian cap uh, thinking that it symbolizes the Pileus cap. And so there's a little bit of interchange going on there. Either way, both of these caps trace back to very ancient times. And as we wrap up, we see another cultural artifact from Andalusia, uh, right here in America. And this is the uh, ancestral home of the Biddle family. And this home is located overlooking the Delaware River. Now this, of course, is interesting because of the competing historical narratives uh, between those who identify themselves as pre-Columbian uh, indigenous people and those who identify themselves as Moors and also identify themselves as indigenous people. Now, many will argue that uh, this naming of places with Moorish names or these Eastern names uh, sort of signifies an earlier pre-Columbian presence of Moors in America. However, one of the things that it might also signify is a dynamic known as ethnic cleansing. And so when you have individuals who are identified as Moor, 
uh, also participating in some of the campaigns, the military campaigns against the Indians. Uh, and we're going to call them indigenous people now because of some dynamics with that name Indian uh, that uh, dynamics that are coming up here. So um, when you have a conquest dynamic going on, it's very difficult to disentangle uh, those narratives. And so it may be as simple as a conquest dynamic. And when you have a conquest dynamic, uh, it's very difficult to then trace back to what was actually indigenous and what was actually changed in the process of the conquest. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care and see you soon.